We just released a brand new pattern at Fat Quarter Shop called To All A Good Night, and our tree skirt patterns have been some of our most popular patterns. So today what I wanted to focus on is cutting the circle from the center of a tree skirt and putting bias binding on that center. So let's get started. So your first step is to go purchase the To All A Good Night tree skirt pattern. Once you purchase your To All A Good Night pattern, you're going to see there is a lot of cutting, but don't be intimidated by the cutting because all of this piecing is very beginner level. The center star you're going to make once, it's 24 inches square and we made it really big so you have a big enough piece to cut for the center of your tree skirt. And then you're going to make six tree blocks. They're going to be unfinished at nine and a half inches. And you're also going to make six hourglass blocks that are nine and a half inches unfinished. Then you're going to put your quilt together. It's actually pieced really nice. So nothing is on point, really easy piecing. And then you're going to send it off to be quilted. This tree skirt was made with the Christmas Eve collection by Layla Boutique. And you'll notice that the stripe is printed straight of grain. And there are two ways you can bind the outside. You can do it bias binding, which means that you're sewing strips on the bias. Or you can put your binding on straight of grain. So on the outside, you can either do bias or you can do straight of grain. But when we move to the center circle, we will have to do bias. So let's move and start working on the center. Once you have your tree skirt quilted and you have the binding on the outside, we're gonna talk about the inside. That's where you have the very center of your quilt or table runner, and we're gonna cut a circle. And what we're gonna do is use that to put uh, your tree through, if you're gonna use this as a tree skirt. Now to cut a circle, there's many ways you can do it. You can just find a bowl in your kitchen that you like the diameter of the circle or you can use a Creative Grids ruler. Now they have a set of circle rulers that I have. I'm gonna use the biggest size, which is a six and a half inch circle, and I'm just gonna center it as good as I can and then draw a line. You don't actually have to have the line. I'm just gonna do the line because once I start cutting, if I accidentally move my ruler, I want a place to put that back on. Now cutting a quilt that's quilted and bound can be very nerve wracking. And my best advice is to use a very small rotary cutter. So a 28 millimeter, you can either use scissors or you can use the rotary cutter. Instead of cutting this way, I'm gonna slightly angle my rotary cutter and you will have to do it a couple of times to get all the way through all the layers. And you're just gonna wanna rotate your quilt as you cut, which is why I left that friction pin on there and just do a little bit at a time. And what you can do before you start doing this is make a little practice piece and get used to doing it before you start cutting into your quilt. Okay, now once you get back to the original, and right there I got a little bit off and that's fine. I'll just kind of clip that off. And now you have a circle in the center. And don't worry if it's just a little bit off, it's gonna get covered up with binding. But what we need to talk about here is if you do a straight binding, it will not work. You have to do a bias binding because bias gives and has stretch and you're gonna need that stretch to fill up the circle. So next I'm gonna show you how to do continuous bias binding. Now for the circle on the inside, you don't need that big of a piece, but if you're doing the outside, you can use this method to make all the binding for the outside as well as the inside. Now what I'm gonna show you how to make continuous bias binding with is a fat quarter. And you're gonna use this same technique, whichever size you use. Now what we need to start with is a square. So I'm gonna start, because it's a fat quarter, I'm gonna turn this into an 18 inch square. Now, if you're doing this for the entire pattern, you're gonna use a one yard cut, and from there you would start with a 36 inch square, but it's the same exact technique. So the first thing I wanna do is just, like I said, cut this into an 18 inch square. So here, because it's a stripe, I am gonna make sure that I cut this straight and you do need to make sure the salvage is cut off and not part of the square. 
and I will use my mat to come up with the 18 inch lines. So it doesn't matter if you're cutting this horizontally with your stripes or vertically with your stripes, it doesn't matter. What you're gonna do is put your ruler corner to corner and you just wanna make sure you get all the way from one corner to the other. And you can put your 45 degree line right here, cut and then just adjust your ruler. Okay, so from here you have two triangles. You're gonna move the bottom triangle up and then you're gonna flip that down. And here, you can actually line up your stripes because they actually just naturally line up. So that'll look really nice. Just line your stripes up. And I'm gonna pin because we're working with bias edges and we're gonna sew along this seam, a quarter inch seam, all the way from the top to the bottom. And it's totally fine that you have these uh, extra pieces on the end. So from here, I'm gonna set my seam, press to one side, and my lines aren't exactly lined up, but they're close enough. And then once I press to one side, then I will press this nice and flat and open. It is important for this to be pressed open. So here's the piece. We're gonna flip that over and I'm gonna cut the little dog ears off both edges. And then we're gonna take this bias seam, and since this is already straight across, we're gonna use a marking pen. Don't use a marking pen with, uh, that will disappear with heat. So I'm not gonna use a friction pen, I'm gonna use a Dritz marking pen. For this pattern, we're using two and a half inch wide strips. So I'm gonna draw a line here, and you need the line to go all the way up. Once you get to the final edge, I'm gonna cut this last side off so I don't have to draw a line and just get rid of this fabric. So this is how your piece looks and we're gonna try to line up these lines right here with these lines so it gets kind of complicated. Now where all of these lines are, I'm gonna draw a little quarter inch line so I have something to line that up with. So I've marked those. I'm gonna turn it right sides together and what you're gonna do is line this up, not like this, you're gonna shift it one space. So you're gonna shift it so that you have somewhere to start cutting. So one will be farther up and one will be farther down. From there, you'll put your pin in both quarter inch sections and line that up. So I've got my quarter inch line there, I'm gonna put my pin in there, go to the other side and make sure that I'm hitting the quarter inch intersection here. So that's gonna give me a continuous line when we start cutting in a little bit. So match your quarter inch on one side to your quarter inch on the other side. And then you'll just weave in the ends, just put a little pin here and a pin here. And we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam and just remember you should have a tail on one side and a tail on the other side. So from here, you just kind of have to move the excess out of the way as you're sewing. And after you sew it, it's gonna lay uh, nice and flat, flatter than it did before. And here, we're gonna press this open and when I'm pressing, I'm just gonna try to make sure I don't put creases on my edges. And this is why you can't use a friction pin because you need these lines to still be there. So from here, you're just gonna take scissors and cut. You can't use a rotary cutter for this, so it might be a little difficult, and just cut as close to the line as you can.
Now I showed you with a fat quarter starting with an 18 inch square. For this quilt, you need 260 inches, so you'll need to start with a 36 inch square and go from there. I'm gonna go to the iron and I'm gonna press wrong sides together down the entire strip. And this is biased, so it's gonna be very, very stretchy. So just do little sections at a time and get it as lined up as you can. And of course, since we didn't use a rotary cutter, it's not gonna be exact, but you'll never be able to see that once we get going. Once you've ironed, you might see some little extra little triangles. You're just gonna cut any of those off that you see. Now we're gonna attach our binding to our circle and I'm gonna cut a straight edge here and I'm gonna put the binding on a little bit different than normal because there's not enough room in this to try to put together a diagonal seam. So once you have that seam, what I'm gonna do is fold it over and create a crease right here. So once you have this created, what you're gonna do is just start right here laying this out. I would highly recommend using Wonder Clips because this is a circle and you wanna kind of make it fit before you go to the sewing machine so you're not wrestling with too much fabric at the machine. And because it's bias, it's gonna bend and fold a little bit. Now, straight binding would definitely not work on a circle. Now you'll notice as you're going, it is gonna fold up a little bit right here. That's okay, that's why we're using the Wonder Clips. Now when you get to the end, you've got this little tail started. I'm just gonna cut out here until I get closer. And then once I'm closer, I can see a little bit better where to cut. So I'm just gonna cut maybe a half inch in, tuck this in that original tail that I started. And I'm just gonna overlap that original tail. And this seam won't be sewn but it's not gonna matter. It's gonna come out a lot nicer than if you tried to do a diagonal piece right here. So when I start sewing, I'm actually gonna start over here, go all the way around the circle and then work this in so it's nice and flat at the end. So I'm gonna start over here and use a quarter inch seam and you just have to like take a few stitches, turn. Take a few stitches, turn. So I rolled my quilt up and I need to get that under, but I don't trust myself to not scratch my quilt with my needle because I've done that way too many times. So I'm gonna unthread and basically take the foot off and the needle off, move that under, and this roll is gonna help it stay out of the way and then re-thread it and keep your needle as high as possible. Now, of course, you could just drag it on, but I, um, I just don't trust myself to do that. Now when you're stitching, what you can do is just pull your fabric to create a straight line. And like I said, stitch a little bit, create a straight line, stitch a little bit. I am using a longer stitch length than normal, like a two to a 2.5. Okay, so we've gotten almost around the edge. I'm gonna stitch a little bit more. And then I'm gonna place the tail inside that little enclosement that we made in the beginning. And you kinda just have to finagle it with your fingers to make it go. And you're gonna sew where you cover the stitches you started on. You wanna cover those up by about half an inch. And then now when I take this off, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the foot off and I'm gonna take the needle off so that I don't accidentally scratch any of the beautiful quilting we have done. So you can see my stitching and you can see it's already forming like a circle. What I like to do is take my iron and just press right on that seam to get it nice and flat. It'll kind of help it fold down
And then from here, you're just gonna fold your binding in and wonder clip it all the way around the edge. And when you're doing that, you can fold it where it's real skinny or you can fold it where you put your stitches right on that second seam and you make it fatter. So you can make it as skinny or as fat as you want. I'm gonna do it where I hand stitch on the back right on top of that quilting stitch that I just did. So from here, what you'll do is turn your quilt upside down and you're gonna hand stitch this close. I think if you try to quilt it on the machine or stitch it with the machine, it would not come out very nice. So what I would do is I recommend the Black Gold Needles by Clover and I would just thread it with a matching thread. This is an Arthel Red and just hand stitch. And when you're hand stitching, just stitch right on that edge where your quilting is. So you'll hand stitch all the way around and then you'll just hand stitch a few stitches beyond where you originally started. I hope you love this method. I really want you to try it. Just try it one time. You might love it, you might hate it, but you're never gonna know until you try. So make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this and I'll see you next time.